Hey, thank you so much for stopping by our Squad YouTube channel. I'm Josh. I'm our youth pastor here at Squad. Squad is our youth group at Cross Point Church. And I wanted to first of all invite you to Squad Wednesday nights at 6.30 here at Cross Point Church. But again, thank you so much for stopping by. We hope that you enjoy this week's message from Squad at Cross Point Church. Hey, as you're making your way down to your seat, look to someone beside you and say, I thought so. Yeah, that's the series that we're in. Um, I thought, last week it was, I thought, God wanted me to be happy. And we said that happiness is not what God is after. It's actually joy. And so I'm not going to rehash that entire message instead. Uh, you can go to our YouTube page and watch that message if you need to, to catch up on it. Or maybe you know a friend that may be going through something and they need that message. That is for them. So send them to our YouTube page and they can catch up on that. But tonight, if you're taking notes, here's your title. I thought... God would answer my prayer. So quick question for you, quick question. Show of hands, how many of you have had all of your prayers answered and have not just lied just now? All right, show of hands. Awesome, that's cool. Nice, it's still happening. I want to hang out with you and get the formula here in a second. Now, I was going to raise my hand because I married the best person, so my dreams come true every day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. All right. Cue the bass, boom, boom, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, so in all honesty, uh, <laughs> uh, in all honesty, I did pray before meeting uh, Marissa, and I mean re-meeting her. I don't know how many of you know our story. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but we did go to high school together. We sat at the same lunch table. One of us remembers that. <laughs> all my guys in the room who uh, have had their heart broken, they understand where I am with that. Um, she, she's not quite sure if I was at the same lunch table, but I'm like, yeah, you sat, you know, right here. And she's like, well, yeah, I sat at that table, but, but you, I don't remember you there. And I said, well, you were wearing this and you did, you know, I can go into some of the detail. And she's like, man, that seems strange that I don't remember you at all, you know, but it's, it's, it's good. Uh, I, I, I cried, I ate some ice cream and, and I got through it. Um, but after college, uh, I prayed and I was actually in a church service thinking about, the perfect girl. I don't, you know, that's probably not what you should think about in church, but that's what I was thinking of. That's where my head was. And so I prayed in that, in that moment. I said, God, give me the girl that you want me to have. Give me someone that's going to help me with my relationship with you. Uh, give me someone who's funny, someone who gets my humor because it's not always received, right? Hashtag dad jokes, you know? And, um, and I saved it for last on purpose, but I said, and, and Lord, let her be pretty, you know, because, you know, there's, there's pretty girls and Christian girls, and I like them, you know, come together, one, the whole package, you know. And, uh, and he answered that prayer, so that, that was pretty cool. So uh, I have had prayers answered, but show of hands, how many people have had prayers not answered or you were told no? Yeah, yeah, there we go. There we go. So uh, this message is for you, uh, and if you need to understand, if you need to check out at some point, uh, let me go ahead and tell you who the message is for. If you're going through something right now, and you're praying about it, this message is for you. If you've been through something devastating in the past, and you prayed about it, this message is for you. And if you foresee that in your future, something devastating may happen, or a struggle may come, and you might want to pray about it, this is for you. So I think I covered everybody, all right? So uh, that probably hit you in various ways. So uh, this message is for you. But let's go ahead and jump in right where we left off last week. So here's what I like to do. I like to read a verse and then look at it a different way. So I'm going to take the same verse that we looked at last week and look at it a different way. So if uh, you brought a Bible with you or you want to use your uh, app on your phone, uh, hashtag, by the way, that's not a hashtag, my fault. Side note, 2018's over, my fault. Um, if you have the Crosspoint app, there's a Bible in that app. So download the Crosspoint app if you haven't already. Uh, all the cool kids are doing it. It's great. Uh, but we're going to be in John 15, and then we're going to go to 16, and then we're going to go to 17, but we're not reading all those verses, all right? Uh, but let's check out John 15, verse 16 real quick. Check this out. It'll be on the screen for you if you don't have a, a Bible. Uh, here's what Jesus said. We talked about it last week. He's talking to his disciples, those 12 people. He said, you did not choose me, right? We ended there last time. You did not choose me, but I chose you. He's talking about the 12. I chose all 12 of you. And appointed you, and here's why. Two reasons. First, so that you might go and bear fruit. And that's what we talked about last week, that how you should be more like the strawberry and not like the donut, all right? You'd have to go back and watch last week to understand it. And then he said, I also appointed you for this reason, 
so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. To which I would say, bet. Okay, um, well, Jesus, I would like some tickets to the finals. Um, I would like the Jordans coming out this weekend on Saturday, size 10 if you could. Maybe a pair of jeans to go with it just in case they're hard to match with. And Jesus, I would, you know, prom date if you could hook me up with that. And Jesus, I mean, uh, a man's got a ride, so I would love a Ferrari coupe. In Jesus' name, aid to the men. You know, so, and that's probably how you have prayed in the past, and maybe some of those prayers have not worked out, and you get caught up in this idea that, well, Jesus just said if I ask in his name, he would do it. But you prayed for the date, and she said, heck, to the no, the whole thing, right? And you sat at the same lunch table, and she said, no, 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 yeah. You prayed for the, the gift, the Christmas gift, like, God, hey, help my family financially, and God said, you prayed for the game. That's my favorite prayer, is those, like, the teams, like, one team gets down on a knee out in center field. The other team gets, like, they're, like, battling each other in the prayer. Like, the game's already started. Like, our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, who art in heaven, right? You're, like, battling out the Lord's prayer. And do you think, like, let's just imagine what's going on in heaven as both teams are praying. I wonder if God's over there saying, mm, this, this purple team. And Jesus is like, I don't know. My red team over here pops. And they just like battle it out right there. And they're just like, okay, okay. Well, they're praying. And then Jesus says, I'm going to take the red team. And God says, I'm going to take the purple team. Loser has to go back down to earth and do it all over again. You know, I'm just the whole crucifixion. No, I don't think that's how it works. So then how, does, how do they battle that? You think like God flips a coin and says, man, I want both to win because they both prayed. I don't think God's too concerned with the outcome of that game. Does that make sense? So I, I don't think that it's really a victory that you want to pray for. But it's your response, your strength, your courage, how you handle yourself in that game, that's more along the lines of what God's looking for in a prayer. Does that make sense? So here's, here's part one of this message. Don't just pray genie in a bottle prayers. Don't, uh, yeah, you know, like the whole Christian Aguilera, I would do it, but you know, it's just the way that my hips, it, it just, I'm old, so... You, you don't want to pray that way. Don't pray, Jeannie, like, Lord, I wish this. Lord, give me this. Let tomorrow be a good day. Let me get an A on the test I did not study for. Let, you know, like, don't, don't, like, pray that way. And then get upset whenever that doesn't happen. It's like, well, I thought, God, you know. But now let me flip the coin because there's another side of this. Because some of you have been through this, are going through this now, or may go through this in the future. You've prayed some serious prayers. You've prayed some... Lord, please let mom's health get better prayers. You've prayed the, Lord, please let them make it prayers. You've prayed the, there was just a car accident and I hope they turn out okay prayers. You've prayed those prayers. And sometimes it's worked out and your faith got stronger. And sometimes it hasn't worked out. And so when you got told no for that prayer, that very serious prayer, you thought three things. Either God doesn't care about me, God doesn't love me, or God doesn't exist. It's got to be one of those three. Either God doesn't care about me because he said no, God doesn't love me because he said no, or God doesn't exist. And so your faith in God starts to just dwindle. And so I wanted to give you some information today to help you through that struggle that you're going through, and it's a very real struggle. And I'm not here to cast on to that and say, you shouldn't do that. No, no, no. That's very painful. We've all lost someone in this room, I'm sure. But here's the thing I want you to, to realize. We live in a fallen world. It is not a perfect world. And here are a couple things to help with that. So here's one illustration I want to give you. This actually happened. Uh, there's a pastor, I guess we can call him a pastor friend of ours now, um, named Perry Noble, who at the age of 11, he lost his mom to an illness. I think it was cancer, but I'm not sure. He was 11 years old. She was very young. I think she was like 40-something. And she passed away, and he prayed that that wouldn't happen, and she died. She passed away, and he's at the funeral, and people would come up and try to give the Christian response to help encourage him, and would say some of the dumbest things, to be honest. And he struggled with that for a very long time. And he prayed, and got told essentially no in that moment, or no for now. And then here's what happened. Years later, his dad now is much, much older, got to live a full life, and I think he's like 70 or 80 something, and he's living in a nursing home. And Perry would go and visit his father. And again, Perry's a pastor. He'd go and visit his father. And he went 
one time. And he left, and when he got to his car, he cried. Probably much like he did when his mom passed away. And the reason he was crying is because he just walked out of the room that his dad was in, and his dad did not remember his name. He lived a full life, and now Alzheimer's was sinking in, and dementia, all these things are taking over. And not that he would pray, Lord, let him go peacefully now. You know, you don't want to pray that kind of prayer. But it goes to show you that this body that we're living in is not the perfect body. That we weren't, essentially, and uh, C.S. Lewis said this, if you've watched the Narnia movies, that guy, he said this. He said, it's almost as though we were not made for this world. And I can't give him all the credit for that, which when you think about that, it's like, that's kind of like out of this world, you know, to think about. But it's so true. And here's how I know it's true, because Jesus hinted at the same thing when he's talking to his disciples in the same conversation. So let me give you another answered prayer. I was praying about this message because I was like, God, there are going to be some hurt people in this room, and they've prayed for things, and you've said no or no now, and you said yes to some other people, and you've done some amazing miracles. What can I say about prayer for those who are hurting? And I, I just didn't know, and, and I, I started reading, and something said, because God doesn't yell, he whispers. And he said, just read up. And I was like, God, I'm tired of reading scripture. Okay, I know that's a terrible thing to say. <laughs> God, I got so much to read right now. I got homework I got to do. I've already read, we read those verses last week. I'm, I'm not trying to read 15. Let, let's move on. And he said, okay. And I got to 17. I was like, yeah, this is, where we're, this is where we're at. 17, this is my place, Jesus. And he said, no, move, read up. And I said, I ain't trying to read up, Jesus. Time's clicking, right? They're about to show up. I need, I, what, what you got? What you got? And he said, read up. And I said, fine, I'll read up. And so I started reading. I started reading. And then I came across a verse that's very, very popular that I'd forgotten all about. And here's that verse. Here's what Jesus said in the same conversation that we just read. He keeps going. Here's what he says in chapter 16. He said, I have told you these things so that in me, remember we said be connected to the vine, in me you may have peace. He's, he's getting ready to die. And he's telling his disciples these last few things, and he's making it very plain for them. He says, I'm telling you all of this so that you can have peace. I'm like, well, that, that's great, Jesus. But he goes on. You will have suffering in this world. Time out, Jesus. You just said peace. Peace and suffering do not go together. What, what are you talking about? He said, I, I told you all this so that you would have peace. And I'm telling you this now. You will have suffering in this world, which makes me think there must be another world where there is no suffering. And maybe that's where Perry's mom went, and that's where Perry's dad went. And now all of a sudden, the cancer that you've prayed off of someone and, and wanted the healing to happen, it happened, but not in this world. And so Jesus is saying, you will have suffering because it's a fallen world. It's going to happen. There are mean people with ill intentions. Not everyone loves me. Not everyone's going to like you guys. You're going to suffer. You can, you can count on that. There will be suffering in this world. There's a, a part to the end of it. And uh, when, he, when he wraps it up, he says, you will have suffering in this world. Can you go back to that scripture so they can see it too? Uh, in chapter 16. But in this world, you have trouble. And he ends by saying it this way. But take heart. In other words, have courage. Take heart. Be create, uh, courageous. Because I have overtaken the world. So he's saying, you're going to suffer, but I've already beat that, that you're worried about in this world. And so I was like, well, well dang, Jesus, I'm glad that you told me to read up. Because it reminded me that, yeah, this is a fallen world. There are illnesses. There are people that have bad intentions and bad outcomes. And sometimes what's putting you through something is someone else's decision. Sometimes what you struggle with is because of your own decision. And sometimes what you're struggling with is because we live in a world that's not perfect. And so you'll have illnesses. And some people want to say, and I, I read this in a textbook for school, and I don't mean to like drop some seminary on you guys. But some people say, well, I don't believe in God because there, there's sickness. That doesn't make any sense. It's like, well, well science, we, we can fix stuff. Yeah, we, we, we cured measles. Well, here they come back, first off, right? But then you, you take rid of one thing, and then there's another, right? And now, now there's cancer. 
And if we can, like, by the way, cancer sucks. I don't know if you can say that in your house. If your parents are watching, sorry. This is First Baptist Church. If you just randomly came across us, I'm just kidding. But cancer's terrible. Cancer sucks. I don't want that for anyone. But it reminds me that this isn't heaven. But I do have a God that has prepared a place for me and those who are in relationship with him. And so I, I kept thinking more about this prayer thing. And here's what we were going to do. All right, so I'm going to wrap this whole thing up. So hang in there for like five more minutes. And by five, I, of course, mean seven. Okay. But Jesus, I was going to show you the prayer where he prayed to God. He prayed, Lord, let this cup pass from me. He didn't want to be crucified because it was painful. And so he prayed that God would stop that. And God said, no. So that's how I know that it, just because you get told no doesn't mean that God doesn't care, God doesn't love you, and God doesn't exist. Because he told his own son no. And I'm pretty sure he cares, loves, and knows he exists. But if your ideology is, well, I prayed about it and he said no, so he must not exist, then your parents must not exist. Because they've told you no before too. Right? So you can't use that ideology. So he's told no to his son over a very serious prayer. But here's how Jesus ended his prayer. He asked for it to pass from him, but he ended by saying, let your will be done. And that's a battle that we have to get to. We have to be where we can say, let your will be done, because I want your will to be done, God. And so I was going to get you there, but instead I thought we should end tonight with a prayer that Jesus prayed for you. Yeah, it's crazy. I was flipping through. And it's like Jesus was saying, one more, flip, flip the page. Flip, go from 15 to 16. We'll come back to that later, but you're, you're not ready for that. Go to 17. And I didn't realize, but before Jesus was crucified, he prayed for himself. He prayed for his 12 disciples, and he prayed for you. And we're not going to read the whole prayer because I don't want you to, you know. But I do want you to read this part. John 17, verse 22 and 23. Jesus prayed this. I have given them the glory, which means the honor. Jesus has given you honor. He is like lifting you up. It's almost essentially like Jesus, if he were here, he's like bowing down to you and his disciples. He says, I have given them the honor, start the glory, that you gave me. The, oh, right? The, the, the just wow. He's given that to us. That they may be one as we are one. In them, sorry, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Now that's cool when you read it very slow like that in a voice, right? Like a whisper voice. It's like very spiritual. But I'm confused about the prayer because he didn't pray in his last moments. I didn't see anything up there like God keep them healthy. God keep cancer away. God give them all six packs and biceps, and good dental records. God, give them good health. Let them get a good job with a 401k. Let them get a free college education. Let them all be present. I didn't see any of that. All I saw was Jesus in his last moments when he's talking to God, and that's all prayer, praying is, is a conversation with God. He prayed for us to be one unit. And what he's talking about is he was discussing with his apostles, his disciples, you guys have like taken up so much sacrifice for me. Like you, you're in unity with me. You want what I want. So we're, in, we're one unit. And now he's praying that for all of us. That hey, if you believe that I am the guy and you want salvation, then you're in unity with me. I need you to be together. And he goes on and he ends it this way. Then the world then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. That's also weird because I thought I would believe in Jesus because of the miracles. I thought that like if someone came in on crutches that I could just like touch it and zing, healed, walking, miracle, right? I thought that that's what would let people know that you're the savior of the world. And Jesus is saying, no, 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 it's, it's the unity. I'm praying for their unity that the world would see one movement, one group of people come together, loving each other. And because of that, then people will know that you sent me, because of the love and the unity. 
Guys, we don't have time to hate one another, be upset with one another. Time's running out, and your relationship and how you treat other people is the best way for other people to know God exists. So that when they're struggling with the same things that you've prayed about for the health of a family member in your own classroom, in your own family, when they're struggling, they can see how you are unified with God and with each other, trusting in Him, having faith in Him, and loving Him and each other. And that'll be the strength to get them through to the next day. So, Isaiah, could you come and make it more spiritual? I'll try to continue to talk slowly as well. But in all seriousness, guys, I know that you've prayed for things, and you really wanted those things to, to come through. You wanted health, and that's a great thing to pray for, and I'm sorry that it didn't work out. And I wish I could say something magical to, to like, make the heavens part for you. But in his last moments, Jesus was thinking about you. And it wasn't that he prayed for health, but peace and unity between all of us. And so, with that being said, knowing that this is a fallen world, and your faith may be shaken, you may have a bunch of questions. Here's a little hint to you. God's not afraid of your questions, or he wouldn't be God. So ask those questions. And like I said, prayer is a conversation with God. It's just you saying, our Father, who is in heaven, your name is so great. Your kingdom, let it come. Let your kingdom come to this broken world and fix it. Which in some cases when you're praying for someone and saying, Lord, give them peace, he may be whispering, I want you to be the way I give them peace. What do you mean, Josh? I mean the unity that you share, the love that you share, like he prayed about. So when you're praying for someone, it may be that you could be the peace, you could be the thing that helps their day get better, that whatever you see someone struggling, don't just do the, oh, Lord, fix their, 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 their tire. Oh, they're on the side of the road. But when someone's struggling next to you, and the death sitting next to you, a friend, it may be that God put you in their life to get them through. And that unity with him is going to be what they need. That's how you pray. It's just calling God who he is, my Heavenly Father. And not trying to get him to bend to your will, but surrendering everything you have. And so a preacher we heard this week said this. He wakes up every morning, and he says, Lord, I give you my feet, I give you my hands, I give you my mind, I give you my mouth, I give you my resources. Open my eyes, let me see where you want me to use them. He surrenders it to him, and then God can work through that. So when we lose someone, it's very painful, it's very permanent, and I know that many of you would love to see another resurrection. I have one living grandparent, and last year for Lennox's birthday, we got to take a picture of all the Carter guys, except for my uncle, but like our Carter guys, like four generations of Carters on the couch. That was cool. But it's not always fair. And then you get to the place where you wonder, Lord, if you exist, I thought you would answer my prayer. So do you not care? Do you not love me or do you not exist? Which is it? So you got to go back to that prayer that he wants the unity between us and him the love between us and him, and to remember that this is a fallen world. But here's what I know. I know that Jesus lived. I know that he died. And I know that he died for my sins. Why did he die for my sins? <gasps> so I could be in unity with him. <sighs> he made it, ha he was praying before it happened. So he would pray, Lord, take this cup from me. But he also prayed, let there be unity. <sighs> wow. 
What a God. I know that he died for me so that my sins would be taken away and I could live in unity with him. And I know that he's waiting for me. He's prepared a place for me and you, if you're in unity with him, that is perfect to where it won't be this body. There'll be 23-inch biceps and calves, actual calves. It'd be a great body. Or it'd just be a spirit floating around with some cool floaty J's on. That's, that's my heavenly body. But it'd be a perfect place. Not this world, because there's suffering in this world. And sometimes God tries to pull people away from the suffering in various ways. He removes it, or he takes it away by taking them away. So, if Jesus lived, Jesus died, died for my sins so I could be in unity with him, I get to heaven where he's prepared a place for me, I will be in unity with everyone else who has had unity with him, who's currently there waiting on for me to arrive. And while I'm missing them, they're probably looking down at me saying, don't miss me, baby. I already got my J's on. So I want us to close this night by just, if you've lost someone recently or maybe it's been a while, just talk to them through prayer. Because I miss you. I can't wait to see you. But I want you to end that prayer by saying this. While I'm here on this suffering world, I'm going to live in unity with Jesus and try to share as much love and unity as I can to let everyone know about the God that lives and loves until I see him face to face. So I ask you to bow your head and close your eyes. And if you have lost someone recently, just... Let them know that. Say, I miss you. But I'm glad you're doing well. Thank you for the memories. And now I want you to turn your focus to Jesus. And pray to him and say, Lord... My Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, let your will be done here on this broken, suffering world as it's done in heaven. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for memories. Thank you so much for experiences. But God, we're still hurting because we miss. But I pray for unity. Let every heart in here connect with you tonight. Let's remember that this world is a broken world, but you did not come to condemn this world. You came to save it. And I pray that if there's someone that's hurting and they're in a place where their faith has been shaken, their relationship with you has been shaken, I pray that you would speak to their heart right now. Let them listen to your whisper, asking for a relationship with you. Thank you for your love and for your grace and thank you for removing pain when pain needed to be removed. Thank you for healing where healing has occurred. Thank you for miracles. But Jesus, thank you for resurrection. And I pray that each student in this room will know that they can live a strong life and a long life here on this earth as one of your disciples. Amen. If you would still bow your head and close your eyes. If, um, if you're someone particularly in a place where you want a better prayer life, you, just, you want a better conversation with God, because it's a two-way conversation, it's not, it's not a monologue, it's a dialogue. Could you just raise your hand real quick, and I'm going to pray for you. That's all. Just shoot your hand up and put it right back down. Okay, awesome, awesome. Awesome, awesome. Hands are going up. You, you just want me to pray for you to... Enhance your prayer life. Awesome. That's great. I see your hands. You can put those down. You can put those down. Dear Lord, thank you for these students. They're seeking a relationship with you, but first they want that conversation. Help them to realize that it's just talking. 
that it's realizing who you are. And they may wonder, do I have to bow? Do I have to kneel? Do I have to? It's just a conversation. You can do it the way you want to, but sometimes our posture can really set up the, just the worship. So I pray that they would be encouraged by what they read in your, your Bible, that they would begin having conversations with you at the beginning of the day, in the middle of the day, and as they go to bed. May they thank you for all that you did that day, despite the outcome, despite the pain, despite the hurt, thanking you for another day to be in unity with those around them and your spirit within us. So speak to those students who raised their hand wanting that conversation with you, Jesus. And now I want to do one last prayer for those that you want unity with Jesus. You've never had a relationship with him, but you want one today. Here's how you have a relationship. You just simply admit with your mouth that you believe he lived and died and was resurrected for you. That's confessing with your mouth, and you believe that in your heart. And then from here on, we're going to try to do the best we can to live that out each day. So as one squad, can we pray this together? Heavenly Father, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I know you're that Savior. I know that you lived. I know that you died. And I know you were resurrected for me. So come into my heart. Help me live my life on this broken world for you every day of my life. Amen.